In this video, we're going to be looking at what happens to materials when they're heated. Now the basic idea that we're exploring here is that when a piece of material is heated, it expands, and when a piece of material is cooled, it contracts or gets smaller. So what we have in the top left hand corner is a piece of pipework, and that piece of pipework is going to have an original length, L0. And by original length, we mean its length at a given temperature. Now if we heat or cool that piece of pipework, we would expect it to expand or contract, meaning it would either get longer or shorter. So let's consider the case where we heat that piece of pipework. As we heat it, its length is going to extend. Now the extension is going to be relatively small depending on the temperature increase, but just so that we can see it on the diagram, I'm going to call that distance the change in length or delta L. So we've got the original length, we've got the change in length, the new length will just be those two things added together. And we have an equation for that underneath the diagram. L, or the new length, is the original length plus the change in length. And if we want to represent that on our diagram, that would give us the new length of our piece of pipework. So this length here, L equals L0 plus delta L. Now we have another equation there that states that delta L equals alpha L0 delta T. Now just to explain each of these terms, we've got the change in length, which we've already seen on our diagram. We've got the original length, and delta T is our change in temperature. So if we heat the piece of material up by 50 degrees, delta T will be 50 degrees. The new variable that we haven't yet seen is alpha. And alpha is something called the coefficient of thermal expansion. We see it on the top right here, the coefficient of thermal expansion. Now where this comes in, all materials have a different coefficient of thermal expansion. So materials will expand and contract by different amounts, even if the temperature change is the same. Some materials will expand more, other materials will expand less. And the variable that dictates that is the coefficient of thermal expansion. Now the interesting thing that we can do with this topic is we can imagine heating a piece of material. Let's say this is our piece of material here. And if we allow that piece of material to freely expand, then it's going to elongate. Now in reality, it's also going to expand in the other direction, but for the time being, we'll just consider the expansion in terms of the length. Now if we allow it to expand, then the material isn't going to be placed under any stresses. But let's imagine what would happen if we constrained that piece of material. So let's constrain the two ends, meaning we're not going to allow it to expand. Well that piece of material wanted to extend by this distance here, delta L. So in theory, what we've done is we've allowed the material to expand, and then we've applied a force to the end to reduce the length back to its original length. Now this is why I've included the equations in the bottom left there for stress, strain and elastic modulus. We've seen these previously, but they relate to this topic as well, because if we prevent that piece of material from expanding, it's like we're applying a compressive force, F, to the material. And when we apply that compressive force, F, to the material, we're changing its length by this distance delta L. And in doing so, we're going to place that piece of material under a stress sigma. Now we'll see this in practice, but we have two situations there. We have situation one, where we allow the piece of material to expand, and we have situation two, where we constrain the piece of material, which is like applying a force to each end and reducing the length after it's expanded. So now let's apply that to an example. So I've listed various pieces of information on the left hand side of the screen there. Now first of all, I'm specifying that we have a two and a half meter length of 22 millimeter copper pipe. And this is one of the standard diameters of copper pipe that you would have in a standard central heating system. So as I know that we're using copper, I've looked up two different variables of copper. I've looked up the elastic modulus, which is 115 gigapascals, and the coefficient of thermal expansion, which is 17 times 10 to the minus 6 Kelvin to the minus 1. 
Now I've added some additional data in the top left corner. The outside diameter of the copper pipe is 22 millimeters, but the inside diameter is 20 millimeters. And back down here on the left, we're gonna have a starting temperature of 10 degrees C, and we're going to have a finishing temperature of 70 degrees C. Now we're going to imagine that that piece of copper pipe is being constrained at the two ends. So we're gonna fix the two ends of the copper pipe, meaning that we're not going to allow it to expand. And in doing so, we're going to calculate the stress on the piece of pipe work, and we're also going to calculate the force that's being exerted on the two ends. So let's begin by calculating the theoretical change in length. Now this is how much the copper pipe would like to extend by if it was free to expand. So this is assuming that it's not constrained at the two ends. Now our equation for that is alpha L0 delta T. So all we're going to do is input our values. Alpha is 17 times 10 to the minus 6. And I'll put that in brackets just to remind me that it's standard form. Our original length is 2.5 meters and our change in temperature going from 10 degrees to 70 degrees is 60 degrees a change in temperature of 60 degrees now when I run that through my calculator I get an answer of 2.55 times 10 to the minus 3 meters now just to put that into context we'll times it by a thousand and in doing so we'll convert that to millimeters well, that's actually 2.55 millimetres. So let's just consider what we're saying there. A two and a half metre length of copper pipe, when heated by 60 degrees, is going to want to extend by 2.55 millimetres. So that's quite a significant change in length, two and a half millimetres. But we're not allowing it to extend. What we're going to do is we're going to constrain it. And we want to work out the stress that that piece of material is going to be under. Well, elastic modulus is stress over strain. Therefore, timesing each side by the strain gives us stress equals elastic modulus times strain. We've already got the elastic modulus over here on the left-hand side. So we need to work out the strain. And strain is just change in length over original length. Now bear in mind we need to use the changing length that would have occurred if the piece of material hadn't been constrained. And the reason for that, if we try to think of this in two stages, we've allowed the piece of material to stretch and then we've applied a force to the end such that the piece of material returns back to its original length. So over on the diagram, we apply a force, and by applying the force, we've reduced it back to its original length. So we're imagining that the force we're applying there is causing the change in length. We need to use our change in length in metres, 2.55 times 10 to the minus 3, that's in standard form, divided by the original length of 2.5 metres, giving us a strain value equal to 1.02 times 10 to the minus 3. And if you recall, strain doesn't have any units, it's dimensionless. Let's now calculate our stress then. Stress is elastic modulus times strain. Well, we have an elastic modulus of 115 gigapascals. Now, from our metric prefixes, we know that giga is times 10 to the 9. So we've got 115 times 10 to the 9 times our strain, 1.02 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's going to give us a stress equal to 117,300,000. Stress is measured in pascals, or pascals is the SI units of stress. Let's convert that answer into megapascals by dividing by a million or moving our decimal place back six, and we get a stress equal to 117.3 megapascals. Now that stress there is significant. 
what it shows is the importance of allowing for expansion in components that are going to be subjected to temperature changes and it's something that engineers must consider in the design process. Now just to finish up we're going to calculate the equivalent force that's being applied to the end of that pipework or the constraining force as shown on the diagram there. And we know from the previous page that stress equals F over A, force divided by area. And rearranging that then, we get force equals stress times area. Well, we already know the stress on the piece of pipework, and we also know our inside and outside diameters. The area that that stress is distributed across on our diagram is going to be the area or the cross-sectional area of the pipework. So this area here shown in red. So let's calculate our area first of all. Now the cross-sectional area is going to be the area of the outside of the pipe minus the area of the inside of the pipe. So area of the outside minus the area of the inside will leave the cross-sectional area or the area that the force is distributed over. The area of the outside then, using pi r squared, is pi times the radius. So the diameter is 22 millimetres. The radius is 11 millimetres. But 11 millimetres in metres is 0 0.011. 11 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.011. Now from that we need to subtract the area of the inside circle. And the inside circle is pi times 20 mil divided by 2 is 10 mil. 10 divided by 1,000, to put it into metres, is 0 0.01. And that gives us an area equal to 6.597 times 10 to the minus 5. 6.597 times 10 to the minus 5. That's going to be in metres squared. And I know it's metres squared because I used metres for my outside and inside radiuses on the line above. Just to finish then, force equals stress times area. And for my area value, I'm going to keep the answer that's in my display. Although I've written 6.597 times 10 to the minus 5, my calculator is actually showing 6.5973445 and so on. And I'm going to use the full calculator answer to avoid any rounding. So force equals stress times area, or area times stress, 6.597 times 10 to the minus 5 times 117.3 times 10 to the 6, because that stress down there is in megapascals, giving me a force equal to 7,739 newtons to the nearest whole number, 7,739 newtons. Newtons. So once again, we're talking a significant force there as a result of the expansion of this piece of material.